Well, hello there. I'm Grant, and this is a real experience that happened to me. I'm not making stuff up. This is nonfiction. It's a recreation. I hope it affects your view of reality. Warble, warble goes reality. Space time can be intense and chaotic and beautifully ordered. Reality is real, but that doesn't make it easy to understand. It's useful to go to different realities, because if you don't, things get stagnant. You gotta mix it up. Keep one foot here and another over yonder into the stars. Or into a mountain meadow. It was a sunny day in the mountains east of San Diego. Gusty, but warm. Joined by two friends, I was ready to walk through the entrance to another world. Dipping my neurons into the 5D out in nature like this, I hoped to connect with the living world and myself. There's something healing about a mountain meadow. It's beautiful. But if you're gonna stroll into the other world out here, you better be ready. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You may remember this is all part of a journey to awaken my true self. There's the whole tarot video about it. There's the rituals. It was, it's a big deal. I was to go a full month without the Dankalank, and smack dab in the middle of that month would be my journey into the fairy portal, so to speak. So for two weeks, I did everything right. For once. Every day, I made a point of meditating, magicking, and exercising. And I got lots of REM sleep. That's the gist of it. It was the first time I really went all out, balls to the wall, or grant to the wall if you will, with meditation and magic. I usually have a daily practice, but this time I did it anywhere from an hour to two hours a day, usually right before bed. I found this led to deeper sleep. I wanted to dream deeply and remember my dreams after waking because engaging directly with my unconscious self would prepare me for what lied within myself. Two weeks of this, leading up to the vivid 5D adventure, cultivated my mind even more than I thought it would. I had a total of one, maybe even two minutes of peak experiences where I legitimately felt like I was on something, but was completely sober. Even during the times I wasn't meditating, I felt calm and clear-headed like never before. Is this all it takes for a lasting peace of mind? I pondered. I felt ready. And finally, the day came. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Here we go! I ate a light breakfast, took a caffeine pill, it was sunny, quite breezy. It was a weekday, so minimal people. It's so pretty out here. After a one and a half mile hike in, we found the spot. It was beneath a thriving pine and accompanying foliage. Needles and cones decorated the sort of shaded ground beneath it. Tucked just behind rocks and a knoll out of the wind, we did the deed. Entering the realm where minutes feel like hours and everything is vivid. The forest surrounding the meadow began to warble and wave. It was beautiful and disorienting. I laid down and closed my eyes to ride the nauseating rock it into hyperspace. Thank goodness I ate light. I just kept lying there. There were no closed eye visuals. I was only questioning my life decisions and trying not to puke when unexpectedly I felt a presence. It felt like the pine tree above me, but inside my mind, my eyes were still closed. I could see in abstraction of a pine tree, the tree was amorphous, you know, kind of warbly. It also had a palpable energy that's description exceeds my skill with language. The pine's metaphorical roots were approaching, ready and willing to wrap themselves around my being. It wasn't aggressive or anything, it was just like the tree and I had floated into each other's field of perception and the closer we floated to each other, the less obvious the boundary between myself and the tree became. Came. I know how it sounds, but it felt like we were beginning to fuse, to mind meld. It was kind of overwhelming, especially because this was only the beginning. Uh, the psychic arms of nature had already reached out with a very intimate invitation. But this is why I was here, right? To let my mind dissolve into the hyper-reality out in the trees. This is the dream space where I could feel the intensity of life without repression. But intertwining my mind with the tree at only 30 minutes in felt... rushed. So, I opened my eyes to stop what I was seeing in, in my mind's eye. I denied the tree's attempted connection, though I now felt intimately connected to everything and to everyone around me. 
Hello, bush. Hi, tree. What's up, rock? It was dope, but it, it was a lot. I needed to stay grounded, so I took my shoes off to connect with the earth. It was kind of prickly, though. Uh, touching the earth definitely helped, however. I felt calm as the effects of the experience continued to intensify. Barefooted, I left the company of my comrades to be alone. The wind was roaring. I watched as it made waves across the landscape. I'd come to the mountains because I was kind of bored with my life and my mind. How boring could I be if I was here? When I was done introspecting, I focused again on the foliage around me, this time with eyes open, now approaching the peak of the trip. It was unbelievable. There was profound, intricate complexity in everything I looked at. A plant was not just a plant, it was a living being of countless moving parts vibrating in perfect synchronicity. Watching one filled the entirety of my perception with everything the plant was. A thriving collection of roots, leaves, xylem, phloem, and neurotransmitters flowed into my mind's eye with crystal clarity. The doors of perception had flung open to reveal what felt like the truest nature of these fractals faceless aliens. My focus was the bridge between myself and everything. That bridge could be crossed at any time. To focus was to lose the separation between myself and the object of attention. Even the microcosm of a pinecone gave way to a macrocosm of incredible complexity. Every moment was forever and every object had infinite depth. The intimate connection I'd rejected with the pine tree was occurring with literally anything I looked at. In 3D reality, we're limited to what we can detect with our five senses. When you look at a tree, for instance, you can only see one side of it at any given moment. You can't see behind it and in front of it and beside it and inside it all at once. And you certainly can't perceive all of its billions of tiny flowing molecules that interact every moment to make it alive. 3D reality is where we live, but our perspectives within it are severely limited. Yet, I felt like I was now partially in a higher dimension. I could perceive every aspect of anything all at once. I was in front of the plant and behind it and beside it and inside it while perceiving all of its moving parts. I did not do this consciously. It just happened. If you read enough Eastern religious books, it becomes almost corny to hear that the separation between the self and the rest of the universe is an illusion. I didn't know it was possible to break that illusion while still being alive and while not being enlightened. A true psychedelic epiphany. But something was wrong. I'd come here for mastery of my emotions, yet my feelings hardly seemed present. I just felt neutral despite these beautiful impossibilities. Despite the uncanny feeling that I was deeply connected with everything around me, there was no euphoria. No insane, mind-melting explosion of energy and clarity. It was all just... normal. Like something I already knew? I don't know. The fairy realm had warped reality, but I was still the same. I felt calm. Annoyingly calm. Even hyper-reality couldn't undo my indifference. That realization began to gnaw at me. I felt trapped in a brain that was bored unless it was anxious. That's when I started to feel anxious. To deal with the anxiety, I tried to rationalize. I'd only taken 100 milligrams of caffeine a day compared to my usual 200. I didn't want the jitteriness of caffeine to destabilize me, so I avoided taking the usual amount. Was my inability to experience intense joy caused by my unfulfilled addiction? Or was this simply my default state of being? I wasn't convinced either way. These annoying thoughts took me away from my connection with the plants, rocks, and pine cones. Now I was simply thinking mundane, anxious thoughts that plague my mind a lot of days. Though for obvious reasons, they were more vivid than usual. For comfort, I returned to the company of my friends, though I didn't tell them I wasn't a happy camper. Fortunately, I'd spent weeks preparing for turbulence like this. As I laid baking in the noonday sun, shaded by SPF 30, my negative ruminations were crystal clear. Yet, though these negative thoughts were intense, they did not carry the same guilt, judgments, and self-aware anxieties that they usually did. They were just kind of happening. 
embarrassing things I said in the past, worries about the future, things I usually freak out about or just that play in my head for no reason. It was all happening now, in this vivid dream space. All of it was unpleasant like a bad dream, not unpleasant like a panic attack. There were moments I'd snap out of it every time I'd hear one of my buds playing with a pine cone or saying something about the universe. It all comes back to the pine cones, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get sucked out of that dreaming in my head to a completely different place with friends, grass, and trees. No matter how deep I'd plunge into the depths of my own mind, I realized how easy it was to wake up and connect with the world outside. I realized how easy it was to take a break from ruminating. Each bad thought dream I experienced in those time dilated moments was immediately let go when I woke up from them. Ruminate, wake up. Ruminate, wake up. Ruminate, wake up. Over and over and over. This surreal repetition sank into my bones with a life lesson that hit deep. I could always let go of any thought dreams that no longer served me. There was the hell in my head, and there was the mountain meadow right outside. I had a choice of where I wanted to be. As the effects lessened, conversation among my friends and I flowed more freely. Jokes were cracked and merriment was had. Now sunset was approaching, the magic hour. We enjoyed the view for just a little longer until we got up from our spot beneath the pine. I said goodbye to the tree and the foliage beneath it before we headed back through the forest towards home. That evening I had a headache, but otherwise felt fine. Once home, we all shared our experiences with one another. It was helpful to say things out loud, but I still had a lot to process on my own. An essential part of going into the fairy realm is integrating the experience you had into your life. This can take days, months, or even years. I had some big questions that needed answers. How do I explain feeling neutral while experiencing firsthand the intricacies of living things? Was the revelation that I could stop ruminating at any time just a passing thought? Could I really live my life with that as a foundational truth? I continued on with my life, letting these questions stew in the back of my mind. I'd notice that plants and grass were so realistic and perfect. I'd look at the moon and feel a sense that I was it, and it was me. There were no intense visions, just a knowing. Though I didn't quite feel the intensity of life, I felt connected to everything and everyone. I was a part of the universe, whereas before, I felt oddly separated from it. During this time, I still wouldn't have called myself content or even happy, but I felt cradled by the universe. As months went by, I had good and bad days. The feeling of a universal bond amplified the good and mitigated the bad. Connection became the foundation for the next chapter of my life. Connection with myself included. If you watched my tarot video, you'll know I struggled with t too much weed. Well. Four months after the trip to the mountain meadow, and a few tolerance breaks later, I finally decided to kick the dank from my life, or at least the last six months of 2021. Maybe longer, we'll see. This will be by far the longest I've been without it in a decade. That feels weird to say. But th this isn't about the weed or the lack thereof. I just feel good. I feel like I need to give a strong ending so that you, as a viewer, don't feel disappointed. I'm struggling to write such an ending because this video is about my life, and my life is still ongoing. That being said, I haven't reverted back to how I was before, and that's what's most important. Feeling in my bones that I am the universe and the universe is me has been my takeaway. I'm far from enlightened, but I have a lot less doubt. Less doubt in the purpose of existence, and less doubt in myself. That's been enough for me, so maybe that's enough for you. 